in some areas. A late German broadcast admits further that reinforcements... Hello and welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metal Gamer Show, and I got one question. What if there were dinosaurs back in World War II? Wouldn't that be crazy as hell? I think so too. Now you're probably wondering why the hell I asked such a question. Well, look at the title. It says Dino D-Day. That means I'm reviewing a game titled Dino D-Day because you know, I like to review games and let's face it, the title sounds interesting. Dino D-Day was developed as a mod on Valve's Source Engine and was developed by 800 North and Digital Ranch Productions. It was released on the PC in 2011. Digital Ranch Productions. Do they make Digital Ranch dressing? Is there even such thing as digital ranch dressing? I highly doubt it, but I have a craving for chicken strips with ranch dressing. Or sriracha chicken strips and ranch dressing. I mean, doesn't that sound good? What the hell does this have to do with the review? Not a damn thing, but I could sit here and eat chicken strips while reviewing this. Although I don't think you would want to hear me shoving food in my face while reviewing a game. That isn't very professional. And you know that I'm a professional reviewer. <sighs> yeah, right. 800 North and Digital Ranch Productions both publish this game, and it can be found on Steam. So if you have a Steam account, you can play this game. Dino D-Day is a multiplayer, team-based, first-person shooter. And the premise of the game is this. Adolf Hitler found a way to resurrect dinosaurs for use in war, which would be World War II. You battle online as either the Allies or the Nazis, and you can either use humans or dinosaurs to fight in the war. You know I have to laugh about something here. You know how the military first person genre has oversaturated the gaming industry? Well this game here has been described by many as a twist of the overdone World War II first person shooter. And you know what? I love it. At least the developers thought of creativity by throwing dinosaurs into the mix, because who doesn't love a dinosaur? Big old monstrous T-Rex ripping somebody apart, that's great. Great. That is family friendly, high dollar entertainment right there. Now there are a variety of soldiers and dinosaurs in this game, ranging from assault troops, medics, heavy support, snipers, and so on. And of course when it comes to the dinosaurs, there are Velociraptors, Dilorosaurus, Microraptors, Protoceratops, and more. Hell, there's even a T-Rex in this game. A badass T-Rex, too, with a jaw-mounted machine gun. Of course, you can only get the T-Rex on certain maps, and you must be a Nazi to get it. When the game was initially released, it had five maps and three game modes, which the game modes were Team Deathmatch, King of the Hill, and Objective Mode. Obviously, we all know what Team Deathmatch is in this day and age. King of the Hill is where a team will fight for control of a section of a map, and Objective Mode is where players are given goals to capture like certain areas and so on, which is something a little different in the online first-person shooter games. And you know what? It's a lot of fun, too. Of course, there has been more maps, game modes, and more add-ons, and they continue to have more add-ons, which is nice, especially when it's updated for free. The graphics for Dino D-Day are pretty damn good. I really like them. The game is well designed. The maps are well done. The layout of the maps are great. And the design of the character and dinosaurs are very well done. Sure, this game is four years old now, but I think it looks great. Although big websites that reviewed this game said the graphics were disappointing. But yeah, probably because it wasn't realistic enough, right? Yeah, it's not realistic. You can't see their fingernails, the dirt in their fingernails. You can't see their arm hairs waving in the wind. You know, gamers and reviewers that just care about the graphics need to be eaten by a T-Rex. Pure and simple. One thing I like about this game is the sense of humor. Placing goats all over the place, the loading screens having letters to family or wives and girlfriends of dead soldiers, and other little things here and there that make me laugh. It's nice to see an online multiplayer military first person shooter to not take itself serious. I wish more games in the genre had this. It'd make it a lot better than what it is right now. The music and sound effects are great, although the only music in the game is at the title screen and so on, and most of it's just old World War II audio with quotes. So there isn't much for music in this game. The sound effects are great. Not only that, there is a little bit of voiceover here and there for the characters. Nothing too groundbreaking or serious, just random noises and babble, which is always fun. The sound effects are very well done, from den fire to explosions to dinosaur sounds to a dinosaur ripping somebody apart. I like it. Nothing I can really complain about. The controls are pretty good. Moving around is easy. Shooting is easy. I use the typical WSAD keys for moving around and, of course, my mouse to aim and shoot. Very simple to understand. They respond very well. Nothing I can really complain about here, either. Thank <laughs> you. 
Overall, Dino D-Day is a badass game. I enjoyed playing it for the time I had it on my Steam account. And you're probably wondering, well, why the hell do you not have it anymore? Well, Steam had a free weekend on a handful of games and Dino D-Day was one of them. So I put enough time in to record footage, write down ideas, info, and all that for doing this review. And of course I recorded tons and tons of footage. I do plan on purchasing Dino D-Day at a later time too, so I can have it for good on my Steam account. I want to do Let's Play videos and just videos of me fooling around on there. Kind of like what I do with Team Fortress 2 at this time. But back to my overall thoughts of this game. The gameplay is nice. The game is fun online. The graphics are nice. The sound effects are great. There's a sense of humor in the game. Not much I can really complain about. If you want to check out Dino D-Day for yourself and you have a Steam account, you can find it on there for $9.99, so 10 bucks. There is also some DLC for $4.99 titled Dino D-Day Last Stand, pretty much adds a new survival mode and a few other things, which is also nice to have. There are quite a few source mods out there, as well as mods for Half-Life 2 and other Valve games. Some of them that I've played are Fistful of Frags, Neo Tokyo, No More Room in Hell, which those three are free on Steam or free to play. There's also Zombie Panic. It's another great one that I used to play back in 2008 or so uh, with a bunch of friends. Unfortunately, I don't have it on my computer anymore. I'm sure I can download it, but I think you have to pay for that one. I could be wrong, though. There's also some great single-player mods like Black Mesa, which is a recreation and more of Half-Life on the Source engine. And there are many other great mods, and some of them are even fan-made mods, which is really cool. At a later time, I will review some of these mods, if not all of them. Well, that's it for this review of Dino D-Day. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.